Hello everyone, this is Joan Standora from the Berryville Area Arts Association. Almost every month our association offers an exhibit to the public for free. This month our exhibit is on the founding mothers. Founding mothers are often not thought about when we discuss our great American fathers, the people that put our country together. But in fact, uh, all of those men had mothers, and often we know nothing about them. Uh, we don't even know their names. So what we've decided to do this month is offer an exhibit on those founding mothers and tell you a little bit about them. Because even though there was no social media, Twitter, Instagram in those days, there was plenty of gossip, plenty of things that we might have found interesting if we lived during those times. The, the mission of the Berryville Area Arts Association is to build community through the arts. This particular exhibit, however, has probably more historical information than it has information about the artists. Our first portrait is that of Mary Ball Washington, George's mother. This painting was made by Robert Edge Pine in 1786. It seems that the accusation that George Washington's mother was a British sympathizer during the war is false, but there is some evidence to support the assertion that Thomas Jefferson may have hated his mother and that Alexander Hamilton's mom may have been unfaithful to her first husband. But back to Mary Ball Washington, who lived from 1707 to 1789. We actually need to thank her twice. First, of course, for giving birth to George and then a second time for talking him into accepting the presidency after he was elected. Historical records show Mary Ball Washington had to talk her son into accepting the office of the presidency after he was elected. George had traveled to meet his mom the day after he found out he was elected the first president of the United States. She was in such ill health he decided not to take the job. But Mother Mary insisted he, quote, Fulfill the high destiny which heaven has ordained you to fill. Go knowing that you go with a mother's and heaven's blessings." Unquote. While there were rumors that Mary was a loyalist or a British sympathizer during the revolution, there really is no hard evidence to support this, and we think it's unlikely, since her three other sons and a son-in-law were also in the Virginia militia. And Mary accompanied George to the Victory Ball in Fredericksburg after the British surrender in Yorktown. Our next founding mother is Abiah Folger Franklin, Benjamin's mom, who lived from 1667 to 1752. Abiah was almost literally the mother of our country. Between her own and her husband's kids from a previous marriage, she was mom to 18 children. Abiah became the second wife of Josiah Franklin of Boston and had eight children, the youngest of whom was Benjamin. Josiah was a widower with 10 children of his own, so Obiah raised all 18. Philosopher, editor of a newspaper, writer, politician, and scientist, Benjamin certainly proved how well Abiah was able to influence her youngest son. And now to Jane Jefferson. Jean Randolph Jefferson has a very interesting story. She lived from 1721 to 1776, and she was perhaps the least appreciated mom among this bunch. When Thomas Jefferson, for example, heard of a fire at his plantation, he's reported to have asked about his books before the safety of his mother. Jefferson probably wrote more letters than any other president and saved over 18,000 of them. It's curious that we have no correspondence between him and his mother. And in his biography, there is only one short sentence about her. Perhaps it's because when Thomas Jefferson's father died, he left control of the estate to his wife instead of his 14-year-old son. It seems that Jane was intelligent, capable, and strong-willed. So at the age of 14, Thomas was head of the household with all the responsibilities, but without much say as to what went on. Jefferson once told John Adams that if he had to live his life over again, he would not go back before the age of 25. 
Finally, on March 31st, 1776, Jefferson wrote in his pocket account book, my mother died at eight o'clock this morning in the 57th year of age. He didn't write a letter to tell his brother until three months later. Moving on now to Nellie Madison, Nellie Conway Madison. She was the mother of the father of the Constitution and President James Madison. She lived in a simple and unpretentious life and it paid off. Nellie lived until the age of 98 and was able to enjoy the companionship of her son after he retired from politics. And finally, these other two prints that we're going to feature in the exhibit are representative of the time and not of any founding mother in particular, but we chose this mother and child to represent Alexander Hamilton and his mother, Rachel Fawcett Hamilton, who spent some time in prison. As a teenager, Rachel was married off by her mom to a man almost 30. He accused her of adultery and had her thrown into prison. But instead of learning the lesson her husband had hoped, Rachel left St. Croix upon her release and met Alexander's dad, James. Though not officially divorced from her husband, Rachel and James married and had two sons. This is material for the Star magazine. Since the church did not recognize their parents' marriage, Alexander and his brother were seen as illegitimate. So when Alexander was in his mid-teens, the family relocated to the colonies where he rose high above the stigma and hardship he'd faced in the West Indies. He rode, rose very high and very far above that experience. And the second print, we chose this image to represent Susanna Boylston Adams and her son, John. Susanna was the mother of one president and the grandmother of another. Their family situation was just about as opposite from that of Hamilton's as you could get. They came from a prominent Massachusetts family with all the best social connections. So we hope we've added a little to your understanding of the hands that rock the cradles of our founding fathers. And we also hope we've encouraged some of you to do some more research on this area. Please stay in touch with our YouTube channel for original videos of our special exhibits and original music. I'm Joan Standora for the Berryville Area Arts Association.